I'm not hopeful. Neither am I. Wait a minute, there is that damn... The following report was broadcast recently on the McNeil Lara News Hour. Why do we do it? Why do we stand in line, pay our hard-earned money, to have our wits scared out of us on the roller coaster? Okay, sure, not all of us do it. And plenty of those who do have youth as an excuse. But then there are the rest of us. Purported grown-ups who are supposed to know better. And yet here we stand, summer after summer, telling ourselves it's for the kids the last time, subjecting ourselves to an experience that's something like being dropped in a queasy knot. Today, America is undergoing a roller coaster renaissance, with amusement parks all over the country spending millions of dollars to attract more screamers than ever before. This is one of the monster coasters that opened this season, the Great American Scream Machine in Jackson, New Jersey. In the coming long, hot days of summer, over a million people will come here to be plunged 20 stories downward, wrenched around hairpin curves at 70 miles per hour, and turned upside down seven hair-raising times. By simulating real danger, roller coasters provide the illusion of mastering a great challenge. For two and a half minutes, everyday demons are blanked out by a mini vision of the apocalypse. <laughs> Coasters pander to the primitive. Their impact is visceral. They zap the synapses and make the heart race. They're exhilarating, gravity-defying, the essence of cheap thrills. The invention of the roller coaster and other mass entertainments like the movies set in motion the debate between elitist taste and popular culture that continues to this day. The virtue of the intellectual versus that of the sublime, the sensational, and the unreal. In that, the roller coaster is profoundly American, like the hot dog, which, along with the roller coaster, was born right here in Coney Island a hundred years ago. In those days, Coney was a magic city an escapist fantasy for the hordes of immigrants and working stiffs of New York's mean streets. Over a million a day came to stroll its boardwalks, thrill to its sideshows, and to ride this rickety, vibrating mountain range of steel. Like Coney Island, roller coasters have had their ups and downs since then. They and other thrill rides fell out of favor in the 60s and 70s, rejected for more respectable, family-oriented entertainment. The theme park. Disneyland and later Six Flags and Great Adventures replaced the earthy symbolism of places like Coney Island with sterile technological perfection and pre-sexual obsessions. They were clean, wholesome, and more regimented than West Point. But eventually, even Disneyland succumbed to the call of the wild. It built its own coasters, but called them by different names. The Matterhorn, Space Mountain, and most recently, Splash Mountain, the highest flume ride in the world. Now, when it seems the everyday world holds all sorts of hidden terrors, it makes a kind of cockeyed logic to take on one we can control, if only for two and a half minutes. Yes, you too can get instant relief from urban anxiety. Just keep your arms and legs inside the car and stay seated while the coaster's in operation. Are you ready? Here we go. The preceding was broadcast recently on the McNeil Lara News Hour. Public Television's nightly report of news and analysis. Whatever it is you do for a living, it probably beats collecting honey in a swamp in northern India. Every job has its ups and downs, but most of us don't have to fear being attacked and eaten during lunch. These men do. They're honey collectors. And they make their living in a place where no one comes without a very good reason. 
the Sundarbans forest of northern India. There's a strict food chain of command here, and man is not at the top. The beast that left this mark is the man-eating Bengal tiger. Every year, at least 30 people who enter the Sundarbans don't come out. Luckily, our camera crew did with footage of the elusive tiger and its less threatening, though not less territorial, neighbors. Forest of Fear, next time on Nature. It may be one of the few experiences you'll be glad you saw on TV and not in person. Sunday night at 8, here on OPB. passage for you to a wondrous and exotic destination. Next stop on travels, India. For Michael Wood, this journey is the fulfillment of his dream, to seek out the soul of India and its people. In asking questions of India, we may perhaps learn something about ourselves too. This is only an impression, only one Westerner's journey, an outsider's point of view. I simply went to see. This is John Hemingway inviting you to come along on a journey of discovery. Darshan, an Indian journey, next time on Travels. You could make a lifetime's worth of journeys and still not see all its variety and richness. Monday night at 9, here on OPB. Some people hustle pool.